Hi everyone, and welcome to this Corchix class video, where we analyze and review some of the major issues in global politics. Today we're going to be looking at some global politics theory. And theory is important for us to think about because when we think about actors and the decisions that states or other non-state actors make, they make those decisions with some sort of assumption about how the world works, their views on human nature, and how those around you are going to be behaving based on your actions. In global politics, we have two major competing theories, realism and liberalism plus a slew of other theories on top of that, ranging from Marxism, constructivism, and many others that also help us look at the world. Today, we're going to be looking at the theory of realism. And realism, at its heart, is grounded in the idea of power politics and a state's desire to focus strictly on their own power. So let's think about that. Why is that? Like, do you ever wonder why countries build up their militaries or go to war? Realists would say that at the heart of it, every state needs to look out for themselves because you can trust everybody else. If the state next door is getting more powerful, building up their military, well, you can't trust them to not use that military against you. So you have to build up your own. And the desire for each state in any international system is to become the most powerful state in that system. In global politics, we would call that the hegemon. And every state wants to establish this hegemony over other states in that system. And all the other states are making sure that that doesn't happen. So again, when you see your state next door building up their military, building more tanks, well, you have to build up more tanks yourself. And then that other state next door is going to see you increasing your own military power. Well, that means they're going to have to continue building up their military power as well, right? So it's this constant push and pull of states trying to make themselves stronger, more powerful militarily, economically, political influence, you name it, because you need to make sure that you're taken care of and that you're taking care number one, right? You can't trust anybody else in the international system as a realist. One of the most influential political scientists of the realist school of global politics theory is John Mearsheimer, who is a political scientist at the University of Chicago. And he puts it this way. Realism paints a rather grim picture of world politics. The international system is portrayed as a brutal arena where states look for opportunities to take advantage of each other and therefore have little reason to trust each other. Daily life is essentially a struggle for power where each state strives not only to be the most powerful actor in the system, but also to ensure that no other state achieves this lofty position. Right, so realism is rooted in this idea that if you don't focus on yourself, if you don't focus on making sure that you are constantly building up your own power, other states are just going to take advantage of you and you're not gonna be around in the system for very long. Realists therefore believe that an international system should be organized in the form of this anarchic world order, that there isn't any one organization, any one body that can tell any state what to do, that in relations with each other, states themselves have ultimate sovereignty, and that's the best way to do it. Very often, realists will look at balance of power theory as being one of the best ways to explain how states relate to each other and why decisions are made. So under balance of power theory, if you have an international system made up of several states, right? An international system could be anything from the world where all the states are in one big international system, but you can also look at international systems on a smaller scale, like say a region, say Asia, for example, could be seen as an international system. 
right? So you have this number of states in this international system, and they are each competing against each other to try and be the most powerful, right? And there's any number of ways this can happen. Say one state has the ability to grow its own power. Say it has good resources at its disposal, it's made some beneficial trade deals, and it's able to grow its power economically, militarily, you name it, right? So it increases its own power. According to balance of power theory, what this means is other states in the system are going to try and grow their own power to balance against the growing power of that first state. And they can do this in any number of ways. If they have the ability to do it, they can grow their own power the same way the first state did. If, however, they don't have access to the same resources, they might, for example, form an alliance with another state to be able to match, to be able to balance against the growth of the first state's power. A balance of power system might also involve war, right? Because states want to become more powerful. One way to do that is if you can see that, you know, state next door is no match for your military, well, you might want to take advantage of that, invade them, and take their power, their resources, and make them a part of your own, right? That would mean your power would grow quite a bit. So other states in the system might band together to try and stop you from doing that. But at the end of the day, it's built entirely around this idea that every state in the system wants to grow its own power and other states are going to find ways to balance against that. And realists say, at its core, this is how global politics works. Because you can have any number of international agreements, United Nations, European unions, whatever. At the end of the day, states only enter in those agreements for their own benefit. And as soon as they might see that not being beneficial for them anymore, they might find the quickest way out of those agreements and find ways to grow their own power themselves. Realists would also look at these state relations as part of what's called a zero-sum game, where when you are able to take something from another state, then their loss is pretty much equal to your gain, right? So when you grow your own power, that means somebody else is losing theirs, and that is a very beneficial situation for yourself. Right? This idea of mutual growth where two states can enter into an agreement or several states can enter into an agreement and all benefit as a result, that's not really quite how realists would see the world, where one state is always going to try to take advantage of others in any sort of agreement and you want to try to stop that from happening. So that's how the theory of realism tries to make sense of the global order. Right? Every state has to be their own champion, make their own decisions, make the best use of their sovereignty in order to grow their own power because they cannot trust anybody else around them. And as soon as you trust somebody else, that's going to be your downfall. So you have to look at yourself first. So what do you think? Do you believe that realism is the most accurate way to explain global politics? Or are there other ways of looking at it as well. Thank you for watching and we will see you again next time.